Hello and welcome to the episode 280 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. Today we have a lunch party, the end of a mini tour and a fruitful studio session. Fortnight at the Kaiser Keller on the 7th of October 1960 for the Beatles, featuring Pete Best on drums and Stu Sutcliffe on bass, for the continuation of their first residence in Hamburg, West Germany. Two years later, in 1962, the Beatles, now in their definitive lineup, performed a nighttime concert at the Cavern Club in Liverpool. The concert served as a lunch party for their first single, Love Me Do, released on the 5th, as detailed in episode 278 of this very podcast. The bill also featured the swinging blue jeans, recently returned from their own Hamburg residency, the Red River Jasmine, and Ian and the Zodiacs. Third concert in Scotland for the Beatles in 1963. The Fabs played the Card Hall in Dundee tonight for the final date of their Scottish mini tour. For the occasion, the Beatles shared the stage with Johnny Hudson and the High Four, Malcolm Clark and the Crestus, the Caravels, and Tommy Dean and the Tremors. Before closing the episode, let me remind you once again to visit www.simonmas.com support to see how you can help me to produce more and better music-related content for you all, and for the information on how to acquire the NFTs of the deluxe edition of this podcast, with hours of extra content, info, and curiosities about the For You Love. Thank you for your support! Let's close the episode with a 1968 recording session. The Beatles were at the EMI Studios working from 2.30 pm to 7 am. The beginning of the session was spent copying the Trident Studio mixes, mono and stereo, for Honey Pie and Martha My Dear, so that EMI could apply its proprietary equalization system to the final master. After that, a stereo mix and two mono mixes of While My Guitar Gently Weeps were completed, and then the focus switched to the recording of a new song, George's It's Been a Long, Long, Long Time, soon to be renamed Long, Long, Long. As it had happened lately for other Harrison's songs, John Lennon was not present at the session, and so the takes featured George on vocals and acoustic guitar, Paul on organ, and Ringo on drums. The best take was number 67, which featured the sound of a rattling wine bottle. The bottle was on a Leslie speaker and sounded every time Paul hit a certain note. In typical Beatles style, the band decided to use the sound and build around it, with Ringo overdubbing a drum break for that passage near the end of the song. Tomorrow we'll cover several recording sessions. I hope you'll join me for the continuation of our journey through the history of the Beatles. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.